Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> then you go out, you get a jump, you charge the battery up, whatever, and you come back the next morning and then... <laughs> I might have a solution for you. Hello everybody, Eric the Car Guy here. I'd like to remind you that this video is brought to you by BBB Industries, makers of premium remanufactured alternators and starters that meet or exceed OE specifications in fit, form, and function. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about a parasitic draw condition. And earlier in the video, that's kind of what I showed you, which was a typical scenario where you go to start your vehicle and you find that your battery is dead or so low that it can't turn the engine over. Uh, on one day and then you charge the battery up or do whatever you need to do and you come back the next day and you find that the same conditions still exist. The first step in this process is of course to check the battery to make sure that that's okay but uh, it's very possible that there is a parasitic draw meaning that there's an electrical drain on the system that's happening overnight as the vehicle sits. Uh, and we're going to go through the step-by-step -step process of how to go about doing a parasitic draw test in this video. And one of the tools that you're going to need is a multimeter with amp capabilities. So that's, that's step one. Uh, and you want it to handle uh, like up to a 20 amp scale. 10 amps could be okay. Probably, 10 amps is probably going to be okay, but uh, it's really preferable that you have one that goes up to a 20 amp scale. But in addition, it needs to go way down to like the 200 milliamp scale uh, because you're many times measuring very small current draw. So instead of sitting here talking about this issue, uh, why don't we go through the process of how to resolve a parasitic draw condition. The first part of this process is to start with a fully charged battery. So for the first step, I'm going to hook up your battery charger and let it charge until the battery is fully charged. Now that I've fully charged my battery, I'm going to check it. make sure it's good. I'm actually going to look at the voltage. This uh, voltage right here is actually a little low. I'm looking for 12.6 volts. I think it's 600 CCA. And I've got 70. So my battery, not so good here. So I'm going to start with mine with changing out the battery. Poof. Now we have a brand new fully charged battery in the vehicle. All right, now that we know that we have a fully charged good battery in the vehicle, there are a few things that we want to do before we actually get started doing our parasitic draw test. Uh, and that is to make sure that nothing on the vehicle is on. Uh, in other words, you want to make sure to remove your key from the ignition. You want to make sure that the doors are closed. Don't leave a door open when you do this test. Not only is that likely to turn on the dome light, which would cause an amp draw, but in addition, it may go through a whole, the, the computer may sense that the door is open and go through a whole series of electrical uh, loads, either maybe priming the fuel pump or doing something of that nature uh, that's gonna draw a significant amount of amps for a significant amount of time. So you wanna make sure that your doors are closed, your trunk is closed, your glove box is closed, all the, your key is out of the ignition. You wanna make sure that it's just like it is when you sit it and park it. So. Turn everything off, take a key out of the ignition, start there. Now that we're sure that everything is off, the next step is to actually check and see if we have a parasitic draw. And to do this, we need to put our ammeter on the amp scale. And many times what that requires is that you move your red lead to a different part of the DVOM. Always start with the highest amp scale. So in this case, I have one, one slot for milliamps and I have one slot for amps. So I'm going to put my lead in the amp side. I'm going to set my uh, dial here for DC amps. I'm going to start with a higher scale. I'm going to start with a 10 amp scale. Now there are some people that say that they remove the positive battery cable to do this. Uh, you can actually remove either battery cable, but I'm going to strongly recommend that you do this with the negative battery cable. And the reason for this is, is that you're, you're tying this ammeter in series. And what that means is, is if you, on the positive side, touch this to any ground, you could actually short the system out via your meter. So to avoid that, do it on the ground side. It's a lot safer. If you short ground to ground, so what? It's not like when you short a positive to ground. Now to perform the test itself is fairly simple. You take your leads and loosen and remove the negative battery cable and put one lead 
in that cable. Take the other lead and touch it to the negative battery terminal and look at the amp draw that you have. In my case, I have an amp draw of 3.7, 3.6 amps. The most you should see when doing this is 50 milliamps. So in other words, when I hook this up, I shouldn't see anything at all. But the fact that I have a three amp current draw going on here means that I have a significant drain on the system when everything is off. So now it's a question of finding out what is causing this significant amp draw here. Now what I've done is I've taken my leads and just used these uh, little plastic clamps that I've got and clamped them in place so that my meter runs continuously while I go over to the fuse box and start pulling fuses one at a time. When I see the amp draw drop significantly, I know I've found the affected circuit. Now I'm going to start with the underhood fuse box since it's the easiest to see, and that's just right here. And I'm just going to pull the fuses out. Luckily it came with a fuse puller. I'm going to pull the fuses out one at a time while watching my meter for the, for the amps to drop. And if I pull one of these fuses out and I see the amps drop significantly, I know I found the affected circuit. So far, no change. So nothing in the underhood fuse box. Now that we've checked all the fuses in the underhood fuse box, we need to go and check the fuse boxes underneath the dash. There may be more than one. Some vehicles have two under dash fuse boxes. Some vehicles have another fuse box in the rear of the vehicle. But you want to go through every single fuse until you see a significant drop in amps until you get down in that 50 milliamp range. But here's a word of caution. Before you open the door, to go in and do your testing in there, you want to disconnect your meter because that can put a massive load on the meter itself. Or you, d you don't want to turn the key on, you don't want to try to crank the engine, any of that stuff. Just keep in mind, all the current is now going through your meter. You do something like that, you could damage your meter. So before you go and open the door, disconnect your meter and then disable the door switch before you start doing your testing in there. Gonna make sure that the door switch is depressed. Now I can hook my meter back up and continue testing. I'm gonna take my meter though and I'm gonna put it up on the windshield so that I can see it inside the vehicle. Luckily the rubber helps it stay. Now that we can view our amps from inside, I'm gonna keep pulling fuses down here until I see a significant drop in amps which would indicate that we've found the, the affected circuit. It's the same process as before. Just keep pulling fuses one at a time until you find one that has an effect. Okay, well we've struck out here, so let's move over to the passenger side and check the fuse box over there. This vehicle is one of those vehicles that just happens to have three fuse boxes. And it's the same procedure as before, and then we want to disconnect our meter from the circuit so that we don't damage it when we open the passenger side door. Now, as you can see, I've disabled the passenger side door switch, and uh, I've also moved my meter. So now I'm going to check the passenger side fuse box. And we're going to proceed the same way by pulling fuses one at a time until we find the source of the draw. Make sure you push these all the way back in too. See that? Found it. A significant drop in amps. Now you've found the affected circuit. Now it's time to see what's on that circuit. Now I just pulled this 10 amp fuse out from this slot right here, which, if I'm not mistaken, let's see, 10 amp accessory interior light radio is what I got. So I know that the circuit involves the interior light and radio and I'll pull the wiring diagram for this vehicle for that particular fuse and go through both uh, what appears to be the radio and the interior light to see uh, all the things that are involved in that circuit. Okay now here is a wiring diagram for that particular circuit. 
Now, I was fortunate enough to be able to download this wiring diagram from BBB's website. I'll put a URL up here on the screen, and I'm also going to put a link down in the description. I've got to say, in a situation like this, a wiring diagram is invaluable. Uh, it's going to be extremely difficult to try to figure out what you're even looking for without one. But what I like to do when I'm looking at these wiring diagrams is I like to look for common areas. So uh, I look around on this diagram, and what I find is there is a common area here at this interior light switch. So I'm going to go over to the vehicle and take a look at that and see if there's any kind of issues going on there. And check this out. This interior light switch has been left on. So let's, uh, let's verify that this will get rid of our amp draw and get it down into an acceptable level and turn it off. And then take a look at our amp draw. Sure enough, we turn that switch off and our amp draw goes down to an acceptable level. And now let's summarize a bit and wrap it up. The point of the testing is to use a logical step-by-step -step process to find your amp draw. Remember to put your meter on the amp setting. Start with the highest amp setting before you get started. In addition, when you first hook up those leads, if you see a negative number to start with, just switch the leads around and that should give you the, the positive numbers that you're looking for. Honestly, in my opinion, it doesn't matter. Do it on the ground side. That way, if you touch anything to ground, it doesn't matter because it's already on the ground side. You're not gonna harm any of the other circuits. Uh, don't try to start the vehicle. Don't try to turn on things. Don't try to open doors unless you have it disconnected. If you do and you already have an amp draw, you could actually damage your meter in the process. Which brings me to start with the highest setting. Start with like the 10 or preferably the 20 amp scale and, and check there first. If you don't see anything on the higher amp scales, switch to further down. Now also keep in mind that if you see no amp draw at all, there should be some because you've got clocks that are on, you've got you know, keep alive memory of the, the computer, there's going to be some draw on every vehicle. So if you see zero, I'd be suspicious of your meter and your leads. Your meter may have a blown fuse or a blown component inside and it's not able to test amps anymore or something like that and you may want to get that checked out. But Every vehicle is going to draw something, but the magic number to remember, 50 milliamps. Anything above 50 milliamps is considered excessive. Also, on luxury vehicles, they have certain systems that may need to go to sleep before you actually do your testing. You may see a draw of above 50 milliamps for up to a half hour after you shut the vehicle off. Uh, uh, sometimes 20 minutes. You're going to have to consult the service manual to find out exactly for your specific vehicle, but uh, the amp draw may vary and may stay high for a significant period of time until that vehicle goes to sleep. Some vehicles have what is referred to as a proximity key system. Um, and with these systems, what that means is you get close to the vehicle, you don't have to take the key out of your pocket, you just grab the door handle and open it because it knows that you actually have the key for the vehicle. Uh, these systems wake up when they see a key that's close to them. So if, if you have one of these vehicles with this type of system, you might want to take the key far, far away. Uh, so that it doesn't wake you up during testing. Also, if somebody walks by with a similar key, it might reach out and try to see if that's the correct key or something like that. Uh, in addition, the emission system uh, periodically turns on when the vehicle is off in order to do some checks and run some tests. There, there's any number of things that could cause this amp draw to go above this uh, 50 milliamp mark, especially on luxury vehicles. In addition, uh, if you go to do this testing, if you have say an aftermarket stereo or an aftermarket alarm system these may very well be the cause in fact in my experience more often than not anything that you add to an automotive electrical system is a potential for a parasitic drive so if you have a security system or an aftermarket security system or you have an aftermarket stereo system particularly one that has like perhaps an amplifier with large cables going to it that type of thing suspect those things first and disconnect them from the system. If they have a fuse, pull the fuse on them. If not, pull the power feeds for them. And in the same way that you were looking for a drop when you did the fuses, look for a drop in the amps at that time. If you see a drop at that time, then it's reasonable to suspect that that, that component is there. I have also found situations where doing parasitic draw testing where there was more than one system that was causing a parasitic draw, so they were both contributing to a problem. So be aware of that. But the magic number, remember, 50 milliamps. Anything above 50 milliamps is a significant amount and can drain the battery in an overnight situation. If you find that you have more than 50 milliamps, then yes, you do have a parasitic draw. Also on luxury vehicles and many modern vehicles, you want to wait up to a half hour before you actually condemn that reading and make sure that you really do have a parasitic draw. 
some vehicles I've found don't go to sleep, and then you find out why. Uh, there may be some logic issue. Maybe there's some other component that's telling it not to go to sleep. Uh, things to look for. Things that I've found in the past. Uh, this dome light situation, uh, that's one thing to look for, but also like if you have a trunk light. Uh, if you have like a, a trunk pass through, like an armrest in the back seat or something like that, where you can look up in there and see, or I've actually gotten into trunks and had people close the blade on me to see if the light was remaining on at that time. Uh, that's something you may not necessarily see, but it's a significant draw. There's sometimes lights in glove boxes that also cause situations like this. Maybe the glove box doesn't shut all the way, and maybe there's a courtesy light that comes on in there that remains on. Uh, any number of things like that, but just keep your eyes out for aftermarket things and lights that get left on. Lights draw lots of amps so they can do things. First, make sure you're starting with a fully charged battery. Uh, then after that, you know, the process of elimination. Start with those aftermarket components and then start pulling fuses one by one in the fuse box until you see the amps drop. Once you find that affected circuit, then look at the different components within that circuit like in this case, there was more than one. The radio and the dome light were both connected. So I would have to explore both of those circuits separately and eliminate each one of those things separately from that circuit to determine what branch of that circuit was the one that was causing the draw. And that's pretty much the name of the game. You're gonna need a wiring diagram to do that with at that point. I hope this information was useful to you on parasitic draw testing. I'd like to remind you that this video is brought to you by BBB Industries, makers of premium remanufactured alternators and starters that meet or exceed OE specifications in fit, form, and function. I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com or follow me on Facebook and Twitter and now on Google+. And lastly, I'd like to remind you to be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.